Hello, my name is Frank Ramos, and I'm going to help you get started with setting your trial up. Most likely, you've been invited to join something called the Smart Start. And so we're going to talk a minute about what exactly a Smart Start is and how it's going to help you to get the most out of your trial with LabTech software. So a Smart Start is essentially a one-to-many engagement where you're gonna join several others that are vetting out lab tech and work with an engineer to get you started. So maybe things like enabling some plugins, talking about some of the features in lab tech, and just generally how to show you how to be a functional engineer uh, before you even spend a dime. Our trial process is something that we take a lot of pride in. And so we wanna make sure that you have the most success that you can, and we're gonna do that by doing a smart start with you. Before we get started, there's a couple of prereqs that we need to take care of. It's actually pretty straightforward. Installing LabTech software is pretty much like installing any other software. Before we begin with some basic setup, you're gonna to need to install the LabTech Control Center. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's just like any other software that you've installed, uh, except as an engineer, it probably requires a lot less configuration than you actually might expect. So you would have received an email that contains some links. It'll look something like this. And you're going to have some basic instructions in here as far as maybe watching the guided tour video, how to activate your trial, what you should have done. Uh, and then lastly, right here, step three, download the Lab Tech Control Center. And so you'll see a link right on that, uh, on that page. And you're going to go ahead and uh, download and install the control center. And at this point, you may want to pause the video if you haven't installed the control center yet. Okay, by now you should have downloaded and installed the executable for the control center to actually control lab tech and work as an engineer. So before we fire that up, we're going to need a couple of items to configure the last few steps uh, to gain access to your trial. We're gonna need that fully qualified domain name that you entered or the, the company name that you entered when you signed up for your trial. So it'll look something like this. Basically, we're gonna use a URL called HTTPS colon whack whack, your choice of company name, which is what you guys would have chosen when you signed up for your trial, dot hosted rmm.com. Once you have that handy, the rest is going to be easy. We're going to go ahead and find the, uh, the Lab Tech Control Center. We're going to click it, open it up, and we're going to actually populate that FQDN with the HTTPS in front, and then the rest would be your company name, .hostedrmm.com. So it's going to be a little bit different than mine, but mine's a, uh, a production lab. Uh, also, keep in mind that you're not going to be stuck with this name if you decide to go into production. You absolutely have the ability to change your domain name, whether it's hosted or you host it yourself. So in the case of logging in for your username, you're going to want to type in the word admin here. And that is going to be case sensitive. So A-D-M-I-N. And you're going to put the pop password in exactly the same way. Once we populate that, we'll be prompted to change that on login. So go ahead and put admin, uppercase A, and admin, uppercase A in the password, and then HTTPS, colon, forward slash, forward slash, and then the uh, URL that you were given once you received the response email for the trial you signed up for. After that, the rest is a piece of cake. I'm going to go ahead and switch my login here to the one that I'm using for this lab and log in. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Once you're prompted for your, uh, your credential change, you'll change just the password at this point. You'll see a screen like this. So this is gonna be your login screen. It'll take a couple of seconds the very first time it loads because it's collecting a lot of information from your LabTech server. Okay, 
So if you see this screen in front of you, congratulations, you've made it. You've actually managed to install, set up the proper credentials, connect to the proper server, and you are now actually connected to your Laptic instance. So in the, my case, you can see up top here, I'm actually connected to our demo lab. While you won't see the list of clients that I have, you'll actually see one that has your company name in place. So in this case, there is mine, ConnectWise, do not use, which essentially tells other people stay out of there because that's actually in my base uh, environment. If you expand that branch, you're gonna see main office and new computers. So you've done it. Now, a couple of tips for you. Uh, I know that uh, most of the folks that are looking at LabTech are technical and you're gonna wanna play around. Well, we still have a couple of more things to go. So the first thing that I always tell everybody is, as much as you are tempted, do not delete anything. We've done a lot of work building out LabTech for you, and it is pretty much ready to go, but we still need to deploy some agents. And then once you gain a little bit of proficiency and understand the environment, then you can focus on manipulating it to your own evil purposes. But for now, we're going to go ahead and play uh, in the exact same way that uh, we've designed LabTech. So you'll see a group here called New Computers. We're going to deploy our first agent from the web portal, but we have to still set a couple of things up. Once we deploy from the web portal, that agent will wind up under New Computers, under your company, and at that point, we can do a little manipulation. So how do we do that? Many of LabTech features are automated, uh, but we do have to have at least one agent deployed in an environment. So we can do this a number of ways. We can stick the executable on a USB stick, plug it in and deploy, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently because we're engineers and uh, we'd rather be a little bit more efficient. So we're gonna actually need two things. We're gonna need that URL for your LabTech instance. So in this case, again, mine's usltdemo.labticsoftware.com. Yours would be the one that you received in the email that says hostedrmm.com. So your company name that you've elected dot hostedrmm.com. We'll need that URL and we're gonna need a candidate system. So we're gonna need a computer that we can remote into or we can get our fingers on where we can actually browse to our web portal and deploy from there. And again, this is, this is just a normal, usually the first agent that we deploy on a site. So we're already starting to, uh, to see some of the best practices in the way that we do things, but it is pretty straightforward and you've probably done the, something like this a million times. Let's get our candidate system. Let's RDP in. And in this case, I've got a session open to one of my machines. We're gonna go ahead and open up Internet Explorer or whatever browser uh, you have of your choice. And we're gonna type that URL in that we received in the email. So in my case, I'm gonna type in USLT demo. And in your case, you're gonna type in the URL that you have attached to that email. We're gonna hit enter and we're gonna arrive at our LabTech portal. One of the things that's interesting about LabTech is even in our trial process, we do not use shared servers. So each server is gonna be its own instance. So once you've logged in, um, you should be good to go. It'll be customized uh, to match the name that we have uh, for what you signed up with. Right down here on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to see install agent. You'll also see access for the Linux and Mac agents, but we're going to start with a Windows agent. That way we can turn on the network probe, which would be discussed in your smart start. So we're going to go ahead and click that. We'll do our normal, I'm downloading software from the internet. And uh, at that point, we'll go ahead and either run it, save it to our desktop and run it that way. All right, now I'm not gonna walk you through the steps of running it, but what I do recommend is that you, uh, you may want to, for your first deployment, just to ensure that it successfully installs, run it as admin, but that is not a requirement under most circumstances. Just running it like a regular old executable be fine and dandy. And I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here. I'm going to pause for a second, let you get that installed, and then we'll pick it back up. So go ahead and pause the, uh, the video at this point, and we will uh, we'll get started once you've, uh, once you've got that uh, deployment completed. 
Also, it's almost a fully silent install. So you're going to run it. And the very last thing you'll see, you won't have any next, next, next. You're just going to run it and you'll actually see a confirmation that the agent was successfully installed. And that'll just be a pop-up dialog. Click OK and then go ahead and click uh, play on the video again. Okay, so if you received the small dialog in the center of your page that said agent successfully installed, congratulations, you've done it. That's your very first deployment. Uh, you'll probably wind up doing that at least once on every new customer that you, uh, you stage up unless you deploy through group policy or some other means. But for work groups, uh, for your smaller environments, for environments where you need to manually install that first agent, that is going to be the easiest way to deploy one. And it's also exactly what you would do if you wanted to walk somebody through installing an agent themselves. So there are no unicorns. There is no celebration. You just get that simple dialogue. Now what happens? Well, if you look down on the system tray, in my case right here, you can see I've got a little robot head icon. That's the default agent icon for the tray uh, inside of LabTech. So it probably isn't showing yet. It normally takes anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes to spin up. Once that tray icon shows, there's a trick you can do. So you'll come in here, you'll click the icon and choose send status a couple of times. If you don't send status and you don't force the agent to phone home, it's gonna take its sweet time and it potentially could be about five minutes before it actually contacts the LabTech server. This usually throws people off because they just expect something to happen. But realistically, once you've gotten comfortable with LabTech, you don't care. As long as you know it's successfully deployed, that's all you're concerned about, and you'll eventually have confidence that LabTech does exactly what it's supposed to do. So the reason it doesn't uh, check in and phone home immediately is because it's actually inventorying the system you just deployed it on. So that way, when you go in to take control of it, you've got all the information at your fingertips nearly instantaneously. Typically, the average, like I said, it's about two minutes uh, without forcing it, but it does depend on, on a lot of environmental variables. Okay, so now what? Well, the rest is easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get out of that machine that we've already peed to. As long as you see the robot head and it's nice and green and there's no circles with lines through it or anything like that, your agents contacted the lab tech server. And again, might take five minutes, but typically it only takes a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and get out of our remote system. That's our first agent. And we're going to go back to the lab tech control center. So if you've logged out or closed it out, log back in. You can pause the video here uh, and then just, uh, just press start once you've logged in. So what happens next? You're going to go to your company name that's showing on the tree. And there will only be one account. So remember, it'll look a little bit different than mine. You're going to go to new computers and you should see your new system there. If you've been logged in and you don't see it, just go to tools and reload system cache. That'll refresh and recontact the server and reload everything, including many of the items that don't update every 20 seconds because they're not necessary. So that should refresh the full inventory of the control center, and then you should see the system. If it doesn't show up and if, uh, if you're being impatient or you're doing something else, no big deal. Go grab a cup of coffee, come back, and then run that or reload the control center altogether, and it should be in there. So new computers is a temporary holding space. So the first thing we need to do is actually take that machine and bring it to your main office. You'll drag and drop it. You'll click yes to confirm that you want to move it to the main office. Just like this. And it'll move the machine. At that point, LabTech's probably still installing Screen Connect and a couple of other features on the target system, but you can go ahead and double click and open the machine up and look at our Stealth IT screen and see what information LabTech's already collected. Like I said, usually if it shows up in the tree on its own right away, it's going to have all kinds of information loaded inside of here. 
So feel free to poke, prod, look around. But as a friendly reminder, don't delete anything. Not until after you've taken, you've had your smart start and maybe a Q&A session or two with one of the guys on the engineering team, like myself. But that's it. You're ready to go. And the rest is what we'll cover on a smart start, where you'll actually have an interactive call with one of the engineers. And we'll show you how to turn on the network probe and uh, definitely vet out your trial and have a good time with LabTech.